Glory to God. God is good a couple times. All the time. Even when we're boneheads. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> you know, the Bible says something very clear. In fact, it says a lot of things very clear. But we just have to be clear to get it. <laughs> so everybody got it? We have to be clear to get it. Amen. See, if we're froggy and stuffy, it's hard to get it. We can only see one dimension of the word instead of the multi-dimensions. But the word is very clear, and it says that God, Jesus, came to bring life and life abundantly. woo -hoo! And the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Bottom line, that's it. Sorry. Your neighbor didn't come. Your boss didn't come to kill you or steal. The devil did. His powers, his presence, his demons, his angels have come to steal, kill, and destroy. So we cannot blame anyone for our failures, loss of battles, and boneheadedness. And destroy. And there's something that we've got to grab hold of because after you've become a believer and God begins to build something, what he begins to build is your testimony. Amen. Your testimony not of salvation, but what God begins to do with you and what's happening in your life. How he's rescued you from your mistakes and failures. How's he, he even rescued me and you from my... Our past before B.C. Amen. Before we became believers. Because he's turning everything to the good. But it's per his purpose is so that you and I maintain a testimony. So God uses things as building a testimony. So you weren't just rescued just to be rescued. You were rescued for a purpose. You're rescued to fulfill a call, a purpose, and a destiny. Amen? And that fulfilling of the call as you're going through the process of fulfilling the call, the purpose, and the destiny, God is building you as a testimony. And one of the things that the devil wants to do is steal your testimony. Because if he can steal your testimony, you bring shame to the Lord. Everybody got it. A testimony is associated with it, also a witness. Jesus came, all right, as a witness of the testimony that was written about him. I'm going to say that again. Jesus came as a witness of the testimony that was written about him. The Bible says that God knew me and you before we were. He knew the things that we would go through. And so all the things that you and I go through is to build a testimony. And Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Building the test of building of a testimony. So you think God's done with your testimony yet? No way. It's being written, you know. In Psalm 127, hallelujah. In verse 1, let's speak it. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Does everybody see this? So unless the Lord builds the house, so what is he building? Your testimony. Does everybody got this? It's important for us to understand this because the devil wants to steal your testimony. We'll talk more about what the testimony is, but again... Unless the Lord builds the house of testimony. It, it, and your testimony is what is going to also be used to infiltrate. 
Does everybody got it? Because without a testimony, infiltration is useless. <laughs> What's the purpose of infiltrating without a testimony? And remember, we're to re fulfill our call, which is battle. Amen. We are called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our, and our destiny is to infiltrate the world system with the talents and abilities God's given us. So what? So we could release the testimony. And that's how people get saved, don't they? You know, testimonies are released without words also. They're released by actions, by responses. They're also released by things you don't do when other people are doing things around you. <laughs> in the book of Revelation, in chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12, It got hot in here, didn't it? <laughs> Not everybody agreed with me on that, but hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. Let's speak it together. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So where is he? In the earth. Hello. And where is his angels? In the earth. Okay, he's talking, earth is also associated with earth's atmosphere also. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been what? Cast down. And they what? Overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. They overcame by the blood of of the land, in other words, the power of the cross. They overcame by their testimony. Their testimony is what God has done for them. Their testimony and witness of Christ Jesus. Has everybody got it? Why? Because they're already dead to this world now. And they did not love their lives to death because... They're already dead. See, a testimony is also associated with the area of if, if you realize certain things, sometimes public books get more published and get well known after the person dies. The testimony goes on because a legacy is left. So again, they overcame by the blood, the power of the cross, their testimony or the witness of Christ, what Christ has done for them, and they didn't love their lives because they gave their life. They no longer fought for their life. Is everybody okay? And in this, we've got to come to an understanding that one of the things that the enemy wants to always do is to steal your testimony. If he can steal your testimony, he will steal your witness. And he does that by trying to bring you back to self. You know, it's amazing how many people, it's, we, uh, um, somebody had brought me, a, uh, uh, actually Wade had brought me something that somebody was here a while back and decided to write something on the internet and just try to destroy us, you know, typical things. And, 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 and if you read all the stuff that the person was saying, you could just see demons spewing out of the person and, and so forth. But it's amazing because the final ending that says, I finally found myself. I thought, and after I saw the ending of it, I finally found myself. I thought, well, yeah, of course you did. Look what the outcome is. Look at the things that you're saying. You know, 
See, so when you find yourself, you become anti-Christ. I'm going to say that again. When you find yourself, you become anti-Christ. When you lose yourself, you become Christ-like. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Glory. First Corinthians chapter three. In verse nine. It says, For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's what? Building. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Again, when a foundation is laid before it's laid, the dirt is dug. Before you can lay a foundation, dirt is dug. So that there can be elevation. That's what they call excavating. You know, before our foundation was beginning to be laid, we had to eat a lot of dirt. It's the same thing. But by, while eating dirt, God was going to use that as a part of testimony. In Second Chronicles chapter 3. Building of a foundation. Second Chronicles chapter 3. In verse 1. It says, Now Solomon began to what? Build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. On Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David, at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Aran the Jezebite, Jezus, Jebusite. And he began to build on the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. This is the foundation which Solomon laid for building the house of God. The length was 60 cubits by cubits according to the former measure and with a width of 20 cubits. The vestibule that was in front of the sanctuary was 20 cubits along. Uh, across was the width of the house. And the height was 120. He overlaid the inside with pure gold. Everything was always overlaid with pure gold. It's a representation of not only purity. Because when gold is heated, melted, it's transparent. But it's also an area of reflection so it's a meaning of transparency and reflection in verse 5 the larger room he paneled with cypress which he overlaid with what fine gold and he carved palm trees and chain wood on it he uh, decorated the house with precious stones for beauty and gold with was, and the gold was gold from Provium. He also overlaid the house, the beams, and doorposts. What did he overlay it with? Gold. Its walls and doors with gold. And he carved cherubim on the walls. And he made the most holy place. Its length was according to the width of the house, 20 cubits. And its width, 20 cubits. He overlaid it with 600 talents of fine gold. Again, he was building the tabernacle of God. He was building the house of God for God to have a place to dwell so he can meet man. But everything was associated with transparency and reflection. And for me and you, that's why Jesus, that's why David always said, I always see the Lord before me. Because Jesus... We're to be reflecting the face of Jesus. 
Has everybody got it? We're to be reflecting everything of Christ. That's why the testimony is so important. In verse 9, the weight of the nails was 50 shekels of gold. Even the nails were gold. And he overlaid the upper area with gold. In the most holy place, he made two cherubim, fashioned by carving and overlaid them with gold. The wings of the cherubim were 20 cubits in, o in overall length. One wing of the cherub was five cubits touching the wall of the room, and the other wing was five cubits touching the wing of the other cherub. One wing of the other cherub was five cubits touching the wall in the, of the room, and the other wing was almost five cubits, was also five cubits touching the wing of the other cherub. The wings of these cherub spanned 20 cubits overall. They stood on their feet and they faced inward. And he made the veil of blue, purple, crimson, and fine linen and wove cherubim into it. So I'm not going to go so in depth with this. I just want you to understand that the tabernacle, the house of God, is a, was known as the sanctuary. The sanctuary now is me and you. Amen? Me and you. In other words, we're being made by God, not by hands of man or by the things that we've done. It's being pointed out by God. It's being established by God. Now, also, because we are his temple. Now, uh, we are his temple also with the testimony. Amen? Now, there's something else with gold I want to share with you, and that gold preserves, protects, and reflects also. It preserves, protects, and reflects. The building of a testimony in James chapter 1. That's why Jesus said, buy for me fine gold. Refired in the fire. Refined in the fire. Yeah. James chapter 1. <laughs> Building of a testimony. James 1, verse 2. What does it say? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or what we call endurance. What's it also producing? Your testimony. Yes, this is one of the building blocks. Your trials, your failures, your successes, Even your sicknesses, even your fears, all of these things that we count negative and against as God uses as your testimony. It says, but pa let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord, for he is double-minded and unstable in all of his ways. But even in the area of instability, will God use that as your testimony? Yes. See, we get so frustrated and Whatever. Because we hate losing control. And when we don't like losing control, it's because we're in the flesh. And God is trying to burn that flesh so that he can be expressed and we can become gold within and reflect him. Has everybody got this? So our various, trials, tri our various trials are building material for a testimony for his house. Go to verse 21. 
What does this say? Read it with me. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a what? In a mirror. So he's seeing him what? Himself. Hello. We don't want to see ourselves anymore. I know you got to pretty yourself up every day. But look through it, will you? We want, to exp we want people to see Jesus in us. So he says, a man observing his natural face in the mirror, what does he do? Verse 24, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. In other words, the man that he was in Christ, when you begin to bring back, allow self to become, it gets removed because the devil is out to steal your testimony. Because self, self will deny your testimony. Does everybody got it? Self will deny your testimony. In verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but is a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. Visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the, from the world. Why? Because even when gold, if there's dirt on it, will it reflect? No. No. Again, Jesus is our reflection so others can see Jesus in me and you. He wants to express himself through us. Everything that is going on in your life is testimony building. Every trial, every failure, every success, every wrong thing is a part of the building material of a testimony. Is everybody okay? Second Corinthians chapter four. So when you do something again, you go, oh man, I can't believe I did this again. I can't believe I said that again. I can't step back and go, wait a minute. Okay, I repented. I'm reconciled. It's going to be a part of my testimony. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <laughs> oh, glory. In verse 16. Let's speak it. Therefore, we do not what? Lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction is building the testimony. For our light affliction, which is but a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. In other words, it's working for us to make a larger testimony. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Our light affliction is working in eternal weight of glory for testimony for his glory. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. You know, it's many times we can't see it. We can't see it. We, we want to understand it all right then and there. We want an answer now. And God doesn't want to give you the answer now because he's not done with the testimony or that part of the testimony. When the answer comes, the revelation comes to you and go, oh, wow, what a testimony. Hello. There as it is. It's just another added testimony. 
In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you've been saved, and raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Listen, that's a testimony in itself. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? Walk in them. That we should walk in these things that are prepared for us. Why? Because it's all a part of building the testimony. When the Lord heals us. When the Lord brings us revelation. When he makes a way of escape. When he shows us something before it happens. All of these things are a part of testimony. Amen? Now, one of the things, again, that the enemy wants to do is steal your testimony. Because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Let me tell you that sometimes when he's able to steal someone's testimony, that person can die. That person can die. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about the testimony and how it's established and, and, and truly what what is the pureness of the testimony? I want to go to, um, I want to go somewhere, praise God. <laughs> I want you to look at the tabernacle. So we're now the tabernacle, right? Okay. Uh, go to Numbers 1. Numbers 1. Number one. In verse 49. And the Lord was giving Moses direction. He says, only the tribe of Le Levi, you shall not number nor take a census of them among the children of Israel. But you shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the what? Testimony. In other words, this is a building where the testimony would be in. Over all its furnishing and all the things that belong to it, they shall carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings. They shall attend to it and camp around the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle is to go forward, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall set it up. The outsider who comes near shall be put to death. See, you and I are now insiders. We're no longer outsiders. That's, we were, outsiders are those who are of the world. We're not of the world. And those who are outsiders will be put to death. If they live according to the ways of the world. But the insiders will not be put to death. They will have eternal life. But people will look at you as an outsider according to the world's standards. <laughs> Better to be an outsider of the world than an insider of the world. Amen. So we see here the tabernacle was a place 
that there were it was a structure that the testimony was put in amen now uh, let's go to Exodus 31 In verse 18. Exodus 31 and verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. And when the Lord had made an end of speaking with him, Moses, on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the what? Testimony. Testimony. The tablets of stone written with the what? finger of God. So who's writing your testimony? The finger of God. Does everybody got this? This is so beautiful that God is actually writing the testimony in you. In Exodus 40. Verse 18. And says, So Moses raised up the tabernacle, fastened its sockets, set up its boards, and put it in its bars, and raised up its pillars. And he spread out the tent over the tabernacle, and put the covering of the tent on top of it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the testimony. What are the, what's the testimony? The tablets that were written. Those are the testimony. God wrote the testimony on the tablets. That's what we used to call the Ten Commandments. And he took the testimony, put it into the what? The Ark. This was known as the Ark of the Testimony or the Ark of the Covenant. Inserted the poles through the rings of the Ark and put the mercy seat on top of the ark. And he brought the ark into the where? Tabernacle. Hung up the veil of the covering and partitioned off the ark of the testimony as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now, here we are with a tabernacle. It's called the tabernacle, the tabernacle of testimony. Then there's the ark which is known as the Ark of the Testimony. And the testimony are the tablets that God was written by God's finger. Does so everybody got this? Those are the three chambers of the tabernacle. Outer court, holy place, most holy place. Man is made of three parts. Spirit, soul, body. Amen. So I want you to understand that it is God who is writing the testimony in you. Go to 2 Corinthians 3. Everybody there? Good. Verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need as some other's epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Verse 2, read it together. You are our epistle written in our hearts, 
known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is the heart. So God is writing his testimony, your testimony, of what he's doing for you, in you. Does everybody got this? It says that he will write his laws in our minds or in our hearts. He will write his ways. He, things will come to remembrance as he's writing the testimony of your life, of what he has done, not what we've done. So everybody got this. And it's vitally important. So everything that you're looking at, everything you're going through, all your ups and downs and all arounds, all your backwards and forwards, all your discouragements, oppressions and heaviness, and all your goofy words, goofy thoughts. Thank God he doesn't record all that, you know. <laughs> Everything is working for a testimony. So everybody got this. Every trial, every tribulation, everything. The word promises that all things will work to the good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. If you believe that you're called according to the, his purpose and that you have a love affair with Jesus, I guarantee you everything will work to the good. And there'll be a powerful testimony continuing building, getting larger, larger, and larger. And you'll be able to share your testimony as a witness with others. Amen? First Peter chapter 2. So don't despise small beginnings, amen? amen? First Peter chapter 2. Hallelujah. Uh-oh, Peter left my Bible. First Peter chapter 2. Is everybody there? Good. Let's see, where are we going? Ah, verse 1. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, laying aside all what? Malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, e envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a what? Living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also are living stones, are being built up a what? Spiritual house. A holy priesthood to offering up a spiritual sacrifice is accepted to God through Jesus Christ. So God is building your testimony. Why? We are a spiritual house. That spiritual house is known as the tabernacle with three chambers. Amen? Praise God. Spiritual house. You know, and, and keeping this house clean is essential. Because one of the things is when it becomes unclean, if you've ever picked up a book that had a lot of dust on it, it's hard to read, isn't it? Hello. Dust is of the world. You know. And sometimes we, we need to just get cleaned up. Sometimes there's certain things that God is asking us to do so that our testimony remains and so that we don't allow the enemy to come and steal our testimony. You know, sometimes you just need to slap the hell out of yourself <laughs> and make room for heaven. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just the bottom line. We need to get hell out of us and make room for heaven. Again, all things will work to the good to those who love the Lord are calling to his purpose. Second Timothy chapter 2. You 
You know, now I, now, I, now I know what it meant when my mother would say, I'm going to slap the hell out of you, boy. <laughs> she was serious. You know, people think that it's a slang thing, but there is a place called hell. Amen. And we're out there like heathens. That means hell is in us. Amen. So we need to get it out. Make room for heaven. Glory. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all and able to teach, patient and humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Again, people so many times make the exchange for their testimony for the will of Satan. They exchange their testimony for the things of the world. They exchange their testimony. And it's just because the enemy convinces them. He manipulates them. He deceives them. Because deception is Satan's weapon. He deceives them in the area that there's something better than God. And there isn't anything better than the Lord. Amen. The Bible is a record of testimonies of lives that God has changed by the finger of God. When God touches you, he begins writing. A testimony begins. The moment you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you've invited him to write on your heart. Amen. Amen. In Acts chapter 9. You know, look at all, all of the individuals. Paul, who was Saul. Look at his testimony. Samson, David. All of these powerful men and women of God all have a testimony. And as the things that were used of the old and God rescued and delivered and healed them. Things that they made mistakes, things the way they live. But he turned it around. Some of the testimonies was of his great mercy. Of his love. Of his compassion. Of his forgiveness. All of these things. Of his healing, of his prosperity, of his blessings. Acts chapter 9. Look at what he says about Saul, who became Paul. Acts 9 verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire of the house of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he's praying. 12, verse 12. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard for many about this man and how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. That was B.C. And here he is, has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a what? He said, what? Everyone say, I'm a chosen vessel. Jesus said, he's a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles kings and the children of Israel. 
For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. That area of suffering is afflictions. That's how God builds your testimony. These are materials that God uses to build our testimony. Does everybody get this? So no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening, let the Lord write in your heart the testimony. Let him have place. Let him touch. Let him change it. Let him build the house, not us. See, when he builds the house, he's writing. When we build the house, we're erasing. And we're getting ready to offer our testimony. See, the devil would love to buy your testimony. He'd like to buy it with lust of the world, with fame, with all kinds of things. Many of people have sold their testimony for money. They sold their testimony for lust. They sold their testimony. And that's what the devil wants. Your testimony, because without your testimony, you're not a witness. In 1 Corinthians 6, Verse 12. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12. Only the Lord can change the course of life because He's the only one that can give life. And He's the one that builds the testimony in me and you. I want that written testimony in our heart. Now we're reflecting Christ. Amen. Let's speak this together in verse 12, 1 Corinthians 6, 12, and we'll close here. All things are what? Lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods. But God will destroy both it and then. Now the body is not for sexual immorality but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of our harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality, every sin that a man does outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Building of a testimony. The world needs to hear your testimony. You know, the other day when people were giving their testimony, what God was doing, it touched other people's. In fact, it broke some hearts because they heard what God was doing in their life and how their life their course of life has changed there'll be a testimony of certain things that you've experienced that God has brought you through that he has showed you that he's released revelation knowledge or wisdom and understanding where you can share that testimony with someone and bring glory to the Lord see we are walking testimony written by the hand of God, expressed through his love, through his power, through his compassion, through his tenderness and kindness. 
He's just trying to be himself in us. And he does it very well at being himself. So why fight with himself? Let yourself go. Amen? Because the moment you allow yourself to come back, you've nullified your testimony. Amen? The world needs to hear your testimony, to see your testimony. And to love Jesus by your testimony. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you. We are honored and blessed for the testimony that you're still writing. I don't know what page you're on, but keep writing. And keep bringing glory to your name. And whatever we're doing and what we're not doing, keep hold of us that we will be that witness of your testimony in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Now I want to thank all the listeners and the viewers. And for more teachings and resources, please visit us at the eternallibrary.org. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and heal you and uplift you because you're a new creation in Christ. And old things have passed away and all things are made new in Christ Jesus.